Tigers gave me two years of playing every day and, you know, just being average and, yep. and struggling and getting over it and struggling again and, you know, learning because that's the only way that you really solidify yourself in the big leagues is by, you know, getting those games and at bats under your belt. Guys, what's going on? I'm Hunter Dillo here from Philly Insider, and I just really wanted to play that first clip from Nick Castellanos post game. It stuck out to me when he first said it when I was watching the post game, because I really do think that's a, a big part of what sparked the Phillies to this nine game win streak. Look, I mean, Bryson Stott, the way he has played since the firing of Joe Girardi and just over the past week or so, and I, I don't want to just point to Joe Girardi, but I just think while you know, I'm not saying Joe Girardi was you know a detriment to him, but I also think that him just being consistently in the lineup every day, he's been able to start to figure things out a little bit more with increased reps and consistent reps too. I think with a guy who's that good and that that much of a like that, you know, I don't know what how to put it into words, but that valuable of a hitting profile. I mean, the the tools he has are pretty pretty insane. For him to be able to continue to get those reps and, and learn the mental side of the game and and learn pitch sequencing and just reading and reacting at the plate and all that type of stuff that I'm sure they're going over, you know, it's important for him to just get in that groove and get the time he, he is that he needs. And he had he wasn't getting that before. And I love Johan Camargo. You know, I have nothing against him. He's one of my favorite Phillies, actually. I know, you know, I like Didi Gregorius. He's also helped bring a spark to the team the past couple of days as well. But I do think it's important when you have a guy like Stott at his age, who's such a hot, you know, such a big prospect. And I, I know I don't I don't want to say that just because he's a big prospect, but just he has all those tools. You want to continue to get him reps. And I think having a guy like Nick Castellanos say that just really reminds you of that. And it, you know, just gives me hope. Nick Castellanos, I think, has just made such a big impact, not only on the field, but off the field as well. I mean, obviously, with Boom, the three errors, he was there. You know, that was huge. He helped him get through it. Castellanos played third base. He understood. You know, he's been in that spot before. And he, he was really vulnerable after the game today, recognizing, look, I've struggled before as a young guy. I was very average in those years, and that's what helped me get to where I am today. So I think I think having Nick Castellanos as a leader for these young guys, the, the daycare, as the they are nicknamed right now, got to love that. I think it's been really huge for, for these young guys to have a leader step up like that. So, you know, while Castellanos, I know he hasn't had the best offensive numbers, I – I still will maintain he's going to get there by the end of the year. And I think, you know, even then right now, the situational hitting it's, it's there, you know, he's definitely coming up key in some situations, maybe got a little bit lucky on that, that second hit today, but at the end of the day, he got the job done, but I think his impact on the field is going to improve. And I think it's still been great. And I just think having a leader like that is so important, but thank you guys for tuning in. Troy. Appreciate you, man. As always, what a win today, man. We are at nine straight now over 500. It's a good feeling. Philly Sports Talk Podcast. What is good, Robert? Good to see you in here, man, after another win. John Zoo, always a pleasure, my guy. Mixing it up podcast. Big W. Archer of four. Almost time to get the rooms out again. We will see. We'll talk about that. Um, Wheeler is Cy Young from Bleed Green. Hey, he, he is definitely in the race for sure. Go Phils. Ring it from the Philadelphia Phillies. And Mark Cryan, I'm loving these last 10 days. Man, it has been a treat to watch this new Phillies team play. And let's let's dig into it today because, I mean, I didn't talk about the game yesterday. I've kind of been doing it every so often. I don't want to do a post game every single day. Sometimes I will, but sometimes I do want to make room for, for some other videos to mix it up a little bit just so you guys understand. But, you know, I didn't talk about the game yesterday. I mean, yesterday, just jump out early. And I think this has been kind of not a recurring theme, but a, a common theme of these – Phillies games in, in this win streak has been jump out early, get on these pitchers, run up their pitch count, do some damage, get them out of the game. And then maybe we go quiet for a little bit, right? But we get insurance runs in the back end of the game. Yesterday, you know, we were up six.
Sorry, guys. It looks like I was buffering for a second there, but I think I am back now. Um, anyway, look, I mean, I, I was just saying the Sorry, guys. It common looks like theme. I was oh, buffering for a second there, but something I think happened. I am back now. Um, anyway, look, I mean, I, I was just saying. Sorry, Hold guys. on, guys. Like something is going wrong with my computer right now. All right. I think we're good now. Sorry about that, guys, for y'all who are watching. Um, Robert, good to see you in here, too. Drop any questions, comments you got while I'm talking. I'm just going over the recap of the games. The winning streak continues. Mets and Braves have a bunch of games to play yet. Phils can get back in this. Yes. Um, yeah, look, I mean, the Braves, Braves are also on a win streak of their own. Don't let that – I just want to say, like, don't let that ruin this win streak for you guys. Enjoy it. I mean, this has been awesome. Enjoy every single win until the Phillies – this win streak ends, if ever. Maybe we'll go over the Moneyball win streak and never lose again. But, um, you know, don't let this – don't let this win streak you know, or the Braves win streak ruin the Phillies, right? Let the Braves do their own thing. They've got plenty of time to lose games. We do too, right? I mean, there's still a long season left, but, you know, I just want to say, like, really savor in the moment right now and just focus on the Phillies. We can focus on, you know, kind of gaining gaining back ground later, right? So, you know, it's it's been awesome to see the Phillies do what they're doing. Um, but anyway, going back to what I was saying, the Phillies, I mean, I think a common theme has been jump out to an early lead and they get some insurance runs later. They go. I like to eliminate that quietness in between and just get some runs, you know, in, in that little period so that we're not just having, you know, giving them time and hope to come back. But at the same time, I mean, look, yesterday you have Schwarber go deep. Shout out, Nate. I did um, I did call it. I was watching the game with Nate and Ian, and Nate goes, oh, he's probably going to strike out here. And I said, no, he's going to go. He's going to go yard. He's going to go. He's going to go right into the right field stands. And Sure enough, he did. So um, I should have taken Nate up. He he was going to bet me, but I'm not a betting man, so I didn't take the bet. But he did get a home run. Um, and, yeah, I mean, look, Didi continues to hit. He had a couple base knocks yesterday, including a double. He's been great since he's come back. Even if he's not hitting for an insane power, I just love to see him, you know, poking the ball out there, getting the bat head to the baseball. And he's consistently done that in his return. You know, yesterday you also had Harper with three hits yesterday. He has a couple base knocks today. Just simple. I mean, he's just putting the bat on the ball. I mean, maybe there's times where maybe Harper's not carrying our offense on his own, but he's still getting on base and and you know doing from doing it from a base running perspective and trying to come around to score. And Reese, Reese is really the guy to mention over the past two days. You know, he's been hot. And I'm I'm not saying I'm the only one who said this, but you know, like I was saying on those other streams when Reese was struggling a little bit, just give him time because while while I'm not opposed to trading him at the deadline. At the same time, this happened last year. He was struggling. He was in 0 for 30 or whatever stretch. Came back, you know, from that, you know, bounced back and was able to just start really heating up. And I think this is just kind of, this is just kind of Reese. It's like almost like June Schwarber, like gets out to a little bit of a slow start and then midsummer heats up. And I think when Reese does heat up, you know, even when that hot streak isn't necessarily main, maintained, I talked about with Castellanos at the start of the stream situational hitting and Reese's extra base hits can be absolutely crucial and absolutely huge for this team moving forward. So that's something to keep an eye on. I think Reese has really been stepping up for this team and I love what he has done uh, at the top of the lineup lately. And, and even when he's not, not having, you know, great, not great results per se, he's working long at bats and, and he's really helping the rest of the guys out. And that goes along with, you know, look, the Corbin Burns game, Reason we really, one of the big reasons we really won that game is because we got Corbin Burns out early in that one. Um, yesterday we got Zach Gallen out of that game early, um, and I mean that that's really to me that's really just something that you you can continue to do. I mean we got Zach Gallen out in the second inning. How many teams can say they've done that this year? So I think that's something that you know needs to continue is just working these pitch counts and and continuing to have have good at bats even if the results aren't there initially because they will come later in the game. Um, and as for today, I mean, look, Reese stayed hot. Harper had a couple knocks. Um, Castellanos, I mean, the, yeah, I literally just saw this comment from Robert. Check, swing, double says it all. Finally, the baseball is falling the Phillies' way. Absolutely, Robert. I mean, that's huge. It's kind of like the Eagles. I don't want to say the, the whole year, but like in this Eagles Super Bowl year, when you're when you're hot, things go your way, and sometimes it just you just get lucky with the Torrey Smith bounce off the knee catch in that Falcons game that allowed us to get three points before half an absolutely massive three points because I believe we won that game 15 to 10, if I'm not mistaken, either way, I think they could either, the Falcons could either tied or gone up with a, a field goal in, in that last red zone stand where Julio didn't get the, the touchdown, but you know, it's, it's really, it's really awesome to see that. And Castellanos I think was surprised it even fell. <laughs> so 
you know, it happened and Bryce made it home on that play. You know, shout out to the ball girl. She kind of, she kind of set the pick for, uh, you know, the guy, or he, she kind of screened the guy in right field, not intentionally, obviously, but you know, I, I think it might've thrown his throw a little bit offline or at least, at least made him hesitate a little bit. I don't know. I don't know, but um, either way, I mean, Bryce got home on that play a little over aggressive, but he got, he got the insurance run and we needed that too. You always need insurance runs. It's always huge to kind of just put a team away. Um, and as for the rest of the team goes, look, Matt Vierling at second base, your guy, Troy, what a second base debut. I mean, he wasn't perfect. You could tell he obviously wasn't a natural second baseman. I think that's the first time in his professional career with the Phillies, including minor leagues that he's played second base. I'm sure he played it in college or at Notre Dame or in high school at some point, but first time in the Phillies organization, I believe that he has played second base. You wouldn't be able to tell you, you wouldn't think he's an all-star second baseman defense or like a gold glove defensive second baseman, but he got the job done and it's, you know, an extra opportunity for them. That's an extra opportunity to hit in the lineup and prove yourself because I never liked that he got sent down earlier this year. I, I, I wouldn't have been opposed to him not starting as much just because yes, were, were the hits not falling? Sure. But he was hitting the baseball very, very hard. The exit below was there. I'm not a huge analytics guy, but you know, when you're hitting the baseball that hard, they're going to fall. And you saw it on opening day at a couple lineouts. One of them was a sack fly, same spot for the right fielder. They, they had him shaded over there, but he was still still able to hit the ball hard. So I think Veerling, Veerling has really just taken advantage of opportunities since he's come back up. Bryson Stott, I talked about having him at the beginning of the stream. I mean, what a, what a what a job this kid has done in the past week or so. I mean, he's really been a huge spark for these guys. And yeah, I mean, the lineup as a whole, they've just they've just really like it's been it's been kind of everyone. Like everyone's had their moments during this winning streak. And you got to give them all a lot of credit. And Thompson gets a lot of credit for letting these young guys, the daycare, spark this team. So I'm um, looking forward to when Mayton comes back, too. Really excited to see him play again. But it's really encouraging to see what this lineup is doing, finally, after we talked about how much they were getting paid throughout the whole season. And then as for the pitching today, what else can you say about Wheeler except just dominant? Two hits, eight Ks, no walks, no runs. It's just the norm. It's the norm at this point. He's definitely, like Bleed Green said, and he's going to be in the race for the Cy Young. Wow. Wow. What a performance today. I wish he could have gone another inning, but I'm not going to nitpick. You know, Rob, Rob, I will get to Rob's bullpen usage. I, I thought he made an interesting comment post game about it that will encourage some. But, you know, Wheeler, it's just been, it's been way better after that first. The first few starts were essentially his spring training. There was no reason to worry. I know some people overreacted. Been fine. He's back. He's back to the Cy Young form. Ace. Absolute ace. There's nothing else you can say about him. The, the fastball, the location, the velocity. And he does it effortlessly. You just see him on the mound literally without without any extra effort. He's not out there trying to throw hard or anything. I mean, obviously he's trying to throw hard, but you know what I mean? He's not trying to overthrow. Just out there, natural, free and easy, comfortable. And he's just chucking. He's just chucking heat and getting the getting the movement he needs on his pitches. Um, Familia got into a little bit of trouble. You know, I <laughs> he, he's not the best fielding pitcher. That's a, that's that's pretty much a given at this point. We saw him slip and fall and, and throw overthrow Reese one time. We saw him not cover first base, and today we saw him throw a ball in the dirt to first base. They got picked uh, picked up by Reese, but. You know, just didn't get to the ball in enough time. And most pitchers do. I'm not saying it's a routine play, but probably one that he should have made. And then he walks the next batter. So he did load the bases, but Bellotti comes in, cleans it up, got the job done. You know, good to see good to see Bellotti in a high leverage situation like that. Really, you know, make sure that he closed the door there because that could have been bad and that could have really given the, the D-backs some confidence. Because yesterday we left the D-backs back into that game and needed an insurance run late. So I was, I was hoping that wasn't going to happen today with – you know, a smaller lead, obviously. And Brad Hand comes in, has a clean inning. I mean, yesterday obviously wasn't the best for him, but that's really been one of his only bad outings. He's been pretty good the rest of the year. And how about Christopher Sanchez, guys? I mean, Christopher Sanchez, I really, again, this is a guy I really, really do like. I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's going to be like locked down, but I think he's a guy who can pitch for you in certain situations. I wasn't in love with him being the closer, but Thompson did say post game that. Knable was warming up and then had some tightness in his shoulder. So Rob decided to shut him down. I'm okay with that explanation rather than mm, we don't want to pitch in three days in a row. 
which is what the previous manager would have said. So I, I'm glad that he was hoping Knable was going to be available today and he was going to try to pitch him again because I, I, I wanted to see him out there. And, you know, while again, the, the whole closer conversation is different. I do think Sir Anthony should get a shot at some point. I'm just talking about, you know, again, using your high leverage relievers more than more than two times in, in three days, right? Use, be willing to take them three days in a row. And it's good to show that Rob did have that willingness to do so because I believe Knebel has pitched the past the past two days, if I'm not mistaken. I know he pitched yesterday to close it out. And he – okay, I was wrong. Well, he wasn't three days in a row, but – um, at least we know it's not, you know, it's not that he just wanted, didn't want to overuse him, right? He was planning to use him. So we'll see. I mean, that that's something that's, you know, up to Knable and, you know, Rob decided to make the call on that. So um, we'll, I mean, it's obviously a little early to really kind of make an interpretations or really kind of grasp what Rob Thompson's bullpen usage is going to look like. There's been, there's been some interesting decisions, right? It's, it's not been, not been perfect, I would say, but you know, it, and, Ultimately, at the end of the day, the results are there, so that's that's why it looks good right now. But I just want to give it some time before I give him like any any major credit for it because I don't know Sanchez. Sanchez isn't exactly the first guy I'd want pitching that last inning there, but I mean he got the job done, so I'm not I'm not going to complain about it today. But just something to note going forward. I do like Sanchez though, and you know he made some good pitches. Did get, did give up a couple hits, but ultimately got out of it and was able to, to close the door. Um, and I really like the job he's done whenever he's been called up over the past year and a half. Um, so, yeah. And I think off of the Bilotti high leverage comment I made, it's good to see Connor. It's good to see Connor Brogdon the past week or so. He's been in some more crucial situations, you know, tight games, one, two run games where he has also closed the door. And I, I that was something I was worried about. I will admit, I, I thought he'd be a good guy maybe to just pitch in, you know, when it wasn't super high, high pressure. But, you know, he has been getting the job done. And it, look, it looks like that spring training performance is behind him. So I really, I'm really glad to see that because I do think Brogdon has great stuff. I think he's a great relief pitcher. And I think he's going to be a key guy moving forward to develop at the back – or uh, not the back end, but as a, as a key guy in the late innings for the bullpen. Um, yeah, that's really all I got today, guys. So if you got any comments, questions, concerns, I'll stick around for a few minutes here. But, um, yeah, Drew Johnson, good to see you. I'm so sorry there has not been a ton of Eagles content. I promise you, I do have stuff planned. It's just with the Phillies, I mean, I, I did not expect a nine-game win streak, so I just got to cover it when I can. And we recorded a lot of Sixers content after the postseason collapse, so I'm still trying to get all of those player reviews out there. Um, but we will have some Eagles stuff soon. I do have – the one video I do have that I haven't recorded yet, but I have – all the, all the information I wanted to gather for it is a Brandon Graham season preview. Um, so I'm going to try to do like all the key players and pr probably not all 53, because I don't know who's going to be on the 53 man roster. And I don't want to do reviews for, I don't want to re do reviews for like all oh, what's it like it's probably 90 guys at this point. So, but I'll be, I'll be sure to do like the key players and I'm going to try to get as many of those out as I can before the season starts. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely be having some more Eagles content coming your way. I know that's why probably the main reason you are subscribed to our channel. So I do apologize. We, we, I will admit we struggle when it's post or when it's off season for like the Phillies or Eagles, we do struggle to like still focus some attention on them just because the Sixers, you know, there's always a lot going on with them this time of year. Um, especially last year, this was the time around when we were playing the Hawks. So, I mean, and things are just crazy with the Sixers, not at the moment, but you know, we're still trying to get that their, their kind of season in review out as we do with the Eagles still. And then you have with the uh, with the Phillies, obviously, there's stuff every single day. I mean, there's always content with them. And then the Stars, I've tried to cover them a little bit. So um, I'm not trying to neglect the Eagles, but I will be getting back to that. So thank you, Drew, for your support. I appreciate it, man. Um, you're the GOAT. As your jer jersey always says, go boy. Um, so, yeah, I'll be sure to get some Eagles content out soon. I promise you. I can't promise a date, but I'll, I'll try to get it out sooner rather than later. Um, Reese is becoming a beast again. Absolutely. You know, it's been really, really cool to just see. I think it really, I, I, I don't know. I, I think it just gets more comfortable as the season goes on. Kind of a mental thing too, but I, I, I do think he's going to be fine. Um, and I, I think he's going to be, he's going to be a key piece to us trying to make this playoff run moving forward. So as of now, we are now, so we're eight and a half back to the Mets. Um, the Braves are now six back to the Mets, which is crazy. 
and we are two games back in the wild card. The Braves are now a half game up in the wild card, actually, because San Francisco um, has gone five and five in their last ten. So we're right there for it. You know, if we had if we had pulled in and pulled another game against the Giants, we would probably be we, we would be one game. And then I, you know, I didn't expect us to sweep the Giants, but if we could have if we those extra inning games, I mean, those matter, man. I mean, I'm not not going to get too upset about it yet. There's plenty of time to make up two games. Obviously, that's nothing, but. It's just it's frustrating because while this nine, nine game winning streak has been awesome, you know you you get you get one of those extra games against the Giants and now it's really like it's really real. Wow, we're, we are one game within the wild card. We can get back there, you know, with one win and one loss from them. So, um, yeah, but those Brewers games were huge. I mean, we're two games behind them now. They're actually tied with the Giants for that spot. But yeah, we're two games behind them because we swept them. And that's that's massive as well. So. Also credit to the Phillies while they dropped the Giants series in awful fashion because they probably should have pulled one of those extra inning games out. They did end up finding a way to sweep the Brewers a week later. So they get a lot of credit for that. But guys, thank y'all for watching. I appreciate y'all. I know it's a late night stream on a Saturday. Probably not a lot of people. I didn't expect a lot of people to be in here, but I appreciate y'all who did, to, did tune in and who are watching the replay. And go Phils. I mean, this is a great time of year. And it's exciting to be a Phils fan right now. They're they're really getting the job done and playing with a lot of excitement, a lot of energy, and they're having fun. They're playing free and easy right now. So it's fun to watch, y'all. Ring the bell. Like Robert said, root for the Angels against the uh, the Medis. Let's see if they can pull a couple games away from them and, and get us within striking distance. And, yes, as always, Furkan Dorkmaz is awful. So we'll see y'all later. Ring the bell. Go Phils.